be behind Donald Trump. It raises the question of what room there is for Nikki Haley to make progress among Republicans. Given the results tonight, given her performance among Republican voters in New Hampshire and given the overall margin in New Hampshire, what is her deer trail out of, out of this particular wilderness? Let's head over to Steve Karnacki at the big board. Well, take a look here. I'll call it up here to the latest results. And I, I think this does, uh, well, let's get New Hampshire up here. And I, I think, let's get to that question here. Um, as soon as I can get it up on the screen. Okay, the question here of what Haley is gonna come out of New Hampshire with tonight, which gets to the final margin, which gets to where she's getting her votes from, where Donald Trump is getting his votes from. And I think we've been sort of saying she wants to keep this in single digits. And what sort of happened tonight, to put this in some perspective, is obviously we showed you the exit poll early in the night, which from Haley's standpoint had some encouraging news for her, just in terms of the composition of the electorate. It looked like a very, and it was, it is, a very high number of independents independents who are in this electorate, and even Democrats. Uh, the current exit poll with all of the waves put in right now has Democrats at 6% of this electorate. Again, it's usually two, three, so it's double, triple what you'd usually expect for that. So that was good news for Haley. And the initial reports we saw were from cities like Dover and Concord and Keene, where she was doing quite well, doing basically what she needed to do to make this a race statewide. What has happened since, though, we talked about this particularly in small towns and in rural New Hampshire, she just, she's just getting swamped. She needed to be, you know, like she was in Iowa. We talked about this in Iowa. A lot of rural counties, a lot of counties with low median income, with low college attainment, she wasn't even getting out of single digits in Iowa. And she's not, you know, she's out of single digits here because it's a two-person race, but she's getting swamped in a lot of those places. So that has held her back from really making this competitive statewide. And then she's had some other things kind of go wrong for her. Take a look at this one. I think this is the biggest on the board right now. Nashua is the second largest city in the state. And this is one Haley didn't just need to win. She needed to win this thing by a pretty comfortable margin. And on paper, to be winning statewide, that was essential. It, it looks like we've got a little bit left in Nashua. It looks like she's not even going to win Nashua tonight. Trump's actually going to gain votes here. And again, look, the city of Manchester, which, you know, again, we thought going in, if Haley, to make it a game statewide, needed to be basically tied here, you know, maybe up a point, maybe down a point. She now is going to lose this thing basically by 16 points in Manchester. And when you start to look at what's left. There are some areas where Haley's going to make up ground that are not colored in this map. City of Lebanon we've talked about. Hanover where Dartmouth is. You can go up here where Durham, the State University, University of New Hampshire, no numbers there. Exeter. Those are four places here where Haley's going to get a lot of votes. Also, we could expect a lot out of Hollis. We could expect a lot out of, uh, it's Merrimack, out of uh, Amherst next door. These are vote centers for Haley that's still to come. Here's the problem, though, uh, for her on top of all of that. You know, some of the places here, you know, we just start taking a look. Atkins, Salem. Salem is the sixth largest uh, town in New Hampshire. It's got more than 30,000 people. Um, it was one of Donald Trump's best towns in 2016. Remember, I said the border, the suburbs, the bedroom communities aren't necessarily the moderate, independent enclaves. Salem is a perfect example. We don't have numbers from here yet, but based on everything we're say, seeing, this should be a blowout Trump win where he really gains uh, a big plurality. I mean, that's going to be true as well. We expect the same thing to happen in Pelham. We expect that to happen potentially in Wyndham when that comes in. Derry, Derry, uh, uh, you know, we've had reporters there, I know. Derry's another big, big community where I think based on what we're seeing, you can expect Trump to get a lot of numbers out of that. So what it all kind of adds up to here is, again, we've got half the vote in right now, 48 percent. Trump is leading this by 11.2 percent. I think there's a very, very real possibility. Um, that Don it's very plausible that Donald Trump is going to end up winning the state by double digits. Uh, when Nikki Haley took the stage earlier, there were some indications of a far less vote in. We're looking at that exit poll and it looked like, hey, this might be a five, six point race and she can go make some noise based on that. But if this ends up, you know, 10, 11, 12 points for Donald Trump and he's winning essentially three quarters of the Republican vote. She's only getting 25 percent, as we showed you, the Republican vote. What is she walking out of this state with tonight to go make her competitive in any other state? Because this mix that we've seen tonight, we've talked so much about, you know, there will be some states that can come close to this. The only one I can think of, it's not actually a state, 
But the only place I can think of based on this demographic mix that I could see Haley absolutely winning in is the District of Columbia. They've got wow. 19 delegates. Donald Trump got 13 percent there in 2016. Kasich and Rubio combined for well over 60 percent of the vote. I don't think he's going to win the District of Columbia if she's still an active candidate there. It's very hard to find other places where she could uh, where she could actually post a win based if, if this wasn't enough for her and it ends up being double digits. And like I said, the other big problem becomes then this is not like the Democratic primaries. This is not like the Democratic primaries where everybody, as long as you get 15 percent, is getting a delegate out of every single congressional district on the map. The rules in most of the states and in most of the big states on Super Tuesday are you win a congressional district, you get every single you get 50 percent. You get every single delegate in it. You get 50 percent statewide. You get every at large delegate. And functionally, in a two person race, all Trump has to do basically is beat Haley in any given congressional district in any given state. He could beat her by two points. He would take all of the delegates. And again, just based on the fact that Haley's still only at 25 percent with Republicans and you're really not going to see this mix anywhere else. You know where else you might see this mix? You might see it next door in Vermont. That could be another a target for her. Vermont with a negligible number of delegates, though. I'm talking about Texas. Texas, talking about California, Alabama, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Michigan. These are states where, you know, Trump's just got to go in there and win a congressional district by even a single vote. He'll get all the delegates out of it. So it's designed on the Republican side, unlike the Democratic side, not to be a six month slog that could even be active going into convention. It's designed to be wrapped up quickly and just taking this mix. Trump with this kind of mix would be poised for a massive, massive Super Tuesday.